What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for Sports. All right, so Charles Barkley over the past 20 plus years has reinvented himself as one of the most successful and most popular sports analysts of his generation. Now, we always saw that he had potential in that field uh, from interviews that he had done uh, while he was a player, but Barkley uh, often had off-the-court uh, troubles during his 16-year NBA career, including a low light back in the early 90s when he accidentally spit on a little girl. Uh, but one of the most infamous moments that I can recall happened back in 1997 in Orlando when Charles Barkley uh, threw a man through a glass a window at a bar. I mean, it was straight out of a scene and like, you know, a movie that you saw back in the late 80s, early 90s, like 48 Hours or Die Hard or some action movie, you know what I'm saying? Where they always had some guy going through, flying through a fucking window and shit. Um, but it's happened in real life. And uh, it's something that's often brought up about, you know, Charles's past. I'm pretty sure he feels embarrassed about it, but it's something that happened. Now, this is back when Charles Barkley was playing for the Houston Rockets. It was during the preseason, right before the 1997-98 season. So Charles Barkley and his entourage had settled into Phineas Fogg's at Church Street Station, the entertainment district in downtown Orlando, with Clyde Drexler and five or six young female friends at around 11 o'clock p.m. on October 25th of 1997. Now that date is etched in my memory because that's the last time that comedian Chris Farley appeared in public hosting Saturday Night Live. So that was a Saturday night. That was late Saturday night going into Sunday morning. In town for a preseason game against the Magic the next night, Charles and Drexler posted up at the popular bar to unwind on a Sunday night, which meant the guard kept to himself while Charles signed autographs, took photos, and bought drinks for strangers who wanted to buy him a beer. While there, the two ran into Gilbert Feliciano, a 30-year-old Spanish reggae performer, whom they had met through actor Wesley Snipes while he was filming the action thriller Passenger 57. The players asked Feliciano to join them. Also at the bar was Jorge Lugo, who was not of legal drinking age yet, but had partied with six packs of beer all day with a group of friends following a big soccer match. A 20-year-old construction laborer, Lugo was essentially living on the streets when he wasn't trying to make whatever money he could to send back to his family. He was also undocumented and had been arrested 10 times in the city, according to the Orlando Sentinel, including one time in which Lugo allegedly told police that his name was Pancho Vila. It was about 1.45 a.m. and almost closing time. Jeffrey Williams, an off-duty cop working at the bar that night, recalled it all seemed calm as people were exiting. In the middle of his police academy training, Jerry Colon had gone out to get his mind off the grueling program and happened to find himself next to Charles's table. Feliciano said the conversation that night was filled with basketball and laughter. That was about to change. Suddenly, Feliciano noticed that when Lugo and his group looked to be exiting the bar, ice cubes were flung at the table where Charles and his friends were sitting, not hitting anyone but bothering the women standing around the NBA legends. Drexler and other witnesses said the action was unprovoked. Feliciano recalled one of the women asking Charles, you gonna let these motherfuckers throw ice at you? Among those in Charles's group that night was Carrington, an 18-year-old from Deltona, 
like Lugo, Carrington, as well as 20-year-old Alexis Lieber, were at the bar despite being underage. Carrington recalled how Charles sought to avoid the confrontation with Lugo. Now, when I say underage, I'm not saying under 18. I mean under legal drinking age, around 20, 19 or 20 years old. Uh, Charles sought to avoid a confrontation with Lugo, who she claimed was cursing at them. Charles's reasoning for avoiding conflict was that the group was clearly having fun and didn't want to get into any type of uh, unnecessary harm. Charles told her, leave it alone, they're just trying to cause problems. Then Lugo allegedly threw a glass of ice at Charles and the women, according to what the police uh, were told by the players. Multiple witnesses would say Lugo was not the one who threw the glass of ice, and Lugo later said it was one of his friends who had tossed it in Charles' direction. The glass struck Carrington in the jaw and knocked her off a chair. She got really upset and said, screw it, if you're not going to do shit, I'm going to do something. A ruckus broke out, and two of the women stormed through the club in pursuit of Lugo and the group. After Drexler said something to Charles, Feliciano recalled, the power forward got up and blazed past onlookers to chase down Lugo, who at five foot two and 110 pounds was at least 14 inches shorter. He was running for his life, Cologne said of Lugo. Lugo, the last of his friends to exit Phineas Foggs, was grabbed on his way out by Williams, the off-duty police officer, who then realized Charles had a hold of Lugo's left arm. Charles, I will handle this. Let go. Charles, let me take care of this. I will not hurt him, Charles assured the officer. I just want to talk to him. By this time, a large crowd had gathered at the front of the bar, to see what Charles was going to do. Feliciano, Feliciano had followed Drexler and the women outside. Charles looked over his shoulder as one of the women publicly challenged him in front of an increasingly rabid crowd. See how women get you in this shit? See how women will get you in trouble? You're not going to do shit. You're nothing but a big ass pussy. See that shit? The taunt set Barkley off. Williams reached for his radio to call for backup, according to the police report. As he released his grip, he felt Lugo escape, except the 20-year-old hadn't gotten away. I felt the victim being pulled from my grasp, Williams wrote in his account of the incident. I looked up and saw Barkley holding the victim up in the air by his arms. Cologne heard Charles repeat a question twice to Lugo. Do you know who the fuck I am? Do you know who the fuck I am? In a matter of seconds, Charles chucked Lugo through the plate glass window. Cologne told reporters that Charles had approached Lugo and flung him like a toy. Police later concluded that Lugo had, in actuality, been thrown into a large mirror, which then ended up smashing through the plate glass window, followed by Lugo. <laughs> Amid the roaring applause from the satisfied crowd, Williams pulled Charles away from Lugo, who had slumped on the ground. A piece of glass from the broken window had struck an artery in Lugo's right arm, said Feliciano, and blood flowed from the wound like a fountain. You got what you deserve, Charles taunted. You don't disrespect me. I hope you're hurt. Williams thought he had separated Barkley from Lugo, but he was again wrong. For all I care, you can lay there and die, Charles said. Concerned, Feliciano took off his shirt, wrapped it around Lugo's arm, and kept pressure on it until para paramedics arrived. As Lugo headed to the hospital, Charles was initially charged with resisting arrest without violence and aggravated battery, a second-degree felony with a penalty of up to 15 years in prison. Lugo accused of instigating the incident, was only charged with misdemeanor disorderly conduct. And um, this is just another situation where 
oftentimes people can initiate problems. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people can initiate problems that you get into. Now, ultimately, I think the situation was settled financially. You know, ultimately, Charles didn't really serve any a real prison time. But at the end of the day, you just don't know what the fuck. See, that's what happens with a lot of these athletes, man. Oftentimes, there's other people instigating situations and uh, peer pressure is a motherfucker. You know, a man don't want a woman telling him he ain't shit or he's a bitch, you know? But then when you go through the act and you get in trouble, then they ghost, you know what I'm saying? So, and again, you know, you gotta look at it like this too, from the other perspective. You gotta be careful of what the fuck you doing in public, man. That guy could have got killed because he's a fucking asshole. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember one time, this was, shit, I was like 19 or something. I think I was catching the public bus. I think I was going to Social Security Administration or some shit. And um, this Trump motherfucker got on the bus, man. And this dude couldn't have been more than five foot. This motherfucker is about Sam, Sammy Davis Jr. size, man. About five foot two, maybe a buck 20. And this dude kept talking shit to me. Kept talking shit to me. Kept talking shit to me. Drunk, you big nigga. You ain't shit. I fuck you up, nigga. And... I just look, I just looked at him and I just kind of laughed it off. Cause I knew the motherfucker was drunk. I didn't take this shit seriously. And at the time, I'm like, maybe about six three, two fifty. You know what I'm saying? So I just look at the dude like, whatever, man. I could fuck you up really bad right now. But do you think anybody's gonna feel sympathy for me being a big motherfucker fucking you up? You're not gonna get any. I'm not gonna get any points behind doing that shit. You know, you don't get no brownie points for beating up a little dude, and ain't nobody gonna feel sorry for me. I'm not gonna feel. Any, I'm not gonna get any sympathy from authorities beating up and potentially killing this fucking guy. Cause at the time, like he was about in his fifties, so you know, you just ignore shit like that. But peer pressure is a motherfucker, man. But tell me what you guys think.